Come on, brother. Ooh, that's, that felt good. Keep going. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Open your mouth. Let it keep going. I believe this is what heaven sounds like. It's everybody lifting up their personal sound unto the Lord. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lift it up. Yeah. So, last week, last week we read a scripture in Thessalonians and we talked about what that meant. And so, if you put the scripture up there, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 20. We read this scripture, right? You remember? We read the scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Keep going. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Go back. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. For this is the will of God. I'll say it again. For this is the what? You might say, it's the will of God for me. It's the will of God for me. So here's the thing that God kind of just messed me up yesterday. So last week we spoke, well, we, did, we talked about prayer. You know, we dug, we dug in to that. We gave like an overcast, everything that was going on, and we talked about prayer. And then to this week, we were supposed to really dig in on rejoicing and thanksgiving, praise and worship and and, and how we need to do these things to be in the will of God. So I wrote, I wrote out this whole sermon, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, God speaking. I was excited. Like, woo, Sunday going to be great. And then last night, God was like, uh-huh, yeah, put that on the shelf. This is what I need you to talk about. How, how many of you know God to do that sometime? So he said, you know what? A lot of, a lot of you guys are really good. He's talking to me, too. Trust me, anything that I say, it kind of cut through me first. He said, man, you know, a lot of you guys, are re you're really great at praise and worship. You're awesome at it. You're really great at dancing. You got your, you got this down pack. Your two-step down pack, you got your whole praise, you got your hollering down pack, your shouting down pack. And God says, so they got the rejoicing. They, they know how to give thanks when, when somebody prompts them to. But he says, here's, here's the issue, though. My people still aren't praying. The word of the Lord last week was that some of us are loud in public, but we're, but we're silent in our secret place. That some of our voices aren't even recognized in the spirit because we never go there. We, ne we don't have a voice. We don't talk to the Lord. I'm saying we, we, I don't, we don't talk to the Lord. We don't spend time with them. And God is like, this is a problem. This is a problem. And God says, if this is rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. If that's my will, why aren't we doing it? He said, some of us, we just don't know. We don't know how, and we don't know why we should. So one it's the will of God. So can we, can we 
do this impromptu sermon about being in the will of God as it pertains to praying without ceasing. Is that okay with you? Look, I'm all nervous. I'm like, ooh, I usually have more time to kind of prepare. But you know what? I, I believe this is God. And you believe with me. So, so check this out. Why pray? Why pray? You put number one up. Why pray? This prayer keeps the fire burning. Prayer keeps the fire burning. Gail, I'm going to jump back between scriptures, so please bear with me. Sing grace, please. I get you lunch sometime this week. <laughs> so it's prayer keeps the fire burning. Because in 1 Thessalonians, what we just read, verse 19 says, if you don't do these things, rejoice without, rejoice always, being thankful in all circumstances and praying without ceasing. If you don't do these things, it says you quench the spirit. What does it mean to quench the spirit? We spoke a little bit about it last week. What does it mean to quench the spirit? Quenching, if you look in a dictionary, another word to quench the spirit means to extinguish. To extinguish a fire. To pour water on it. So what that is, that's like me. Like the fire, what is the fire of God? The fire of God is just the, just the excitement, the will of God burning in, in your life. The light of God just burning bright. The tenacity to do his will. That's the fire of God. God moving in your life. And when we stop praying, when we don't go to God, Pray without ceasing. It's like pouring water on it, on this fire every time. So the question is, what are you going to do? Are you going to pour water on the fire or are you going to put another log in the fire? The question is, what do you want? Do you want the fire to burn bright or do you want to dim it down? And God is saying the reason we dim it down is because we don't pray. You want me to do all these things for you, but you don't need to talk to me. That's like somebody call, calling you for a favor and you ain't talked to him in three, four years. Hey, brother, you mind taking care of my rent this week? Brother, I ain't talked to you in, in ages. And because I love you, I try to help you where I can. But you don't really have much favor because we don't have much relationship. Favor is actually in the word of God, guys. This ain't in my notes, God. I know. Favor is actually in the word of God. It's a thing God does. The better relationship we have with him, the more favor he extends. I heard a preacher say once before, favor ain't fair. <laughs> favor ain't fair to everybody. So prayer keeps the fire burning. The moment we stop trusting God is the moment we, it, the moment we stop trusting God that's the moment you stop praying to God. And at that moment, the fire of God is extinguished. At that moment. Somebody just pray to the Lord right now. God, don't, don't extinguish my fire. Don't extinguish my fire. I don't, I don't pray aloud. Don't do it, God. I don't want to put water on this fire anymore. Let it burn bright. Help me put another log in the fire. Thank you, Lord. Two, prayer attracts God. Prayer attracts God. When we pray, God shows up. When we pray to the Lord, when we talk to him, God shows up immediately. When we pray, God responds. Gavin, since you're since you taller than me, can you help me out, brother? <laughs> I'm throwing some random examples out here because I didn't have time to really prepare for examples. So we're going to do it. Amen? He used to play basketball and stuff. He quit. <laughs> he, said, he said I was. So when we pray, God responds. I'm going to pray. You just, just jump in front of me. Amen? So 
The moment I'm like, you know what, this is going on in my life, I need to give it over to the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus. See how quick he shows up? Stay there, stay there. You see how quick he shows up? Face the people. Look, some of y'all be scared to fight me with him standing in front of me. You're going to think twice about approaching me when you know some a big God like this brother is standing in front of me. So I don't care how weak I may look to you. And you know what? Just like we used to be in high school. Uh-huh. What else you got to say? Because you're going to have to deal with him. You have to deal with God first. Thank you, brother. You have to deal with God first. See, some of us, God wants us to depend on him like that. And we don't. God says, I respond to your prayer. I show up. Psalms, put Psalm 66, 19 through 20 up there. It says, but certainly God has heard. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness for me? When you, when you begin to pray, God doesn't turn away, he turns in. It doesn't matter what God's doing. As soon as he hears your voice, Father God, I need your help, he turns around. He's like, hold on, what do you need? How can I help you? Where do you want me to step in? Who do you want me to protect you from? What can I give to you to help fulfill my will here in the earth? Prayer attracts God. Gavin, can you come back up here? <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So when we pray, I just I, I, teacher is my top fivefold gifting, and um, but I'm a visual learner as well. So like I have to see some things. For me to understand. And I know that there are certain people out there that's just like me. Amen. Amen. So prayer attracts God. And there's a scripture in Psalms, Gail, you don't have this, but there's a scripture in Psalms that says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under what? The shadow of the Almighty. A lot of us, God's like, man, you know what? I did. I made you strong. You feel strong. But God is saying your strength isn't displayed by you just trying to make it through the thing on your own. Your strength is displayed when you know how to hide. Your strength is displayed when you know where to hide. In prayer, God shows up and casts a shadow over you. When I start praying, Father God, and th th my strength is showed when I know where to go hide. This is even, and you're thinking warfare and war times, this is even a great battle strategy when it comes to being in the trenches. I know you like to play Call of Duty. So it's, it's one of these things. You got to know where to hide so that you know how to fight. So I know, I know when to jump out and start shooting. But I also know where, to, where I need to hide back. And God will let me know, okay, good, it's time, it's time for the, to get back out there. Boom. I'm going to peek my head back out, and I'm hiding back under his shadow. Under the shadow of the Almighty, because this is bulletproof right here. He not going to fall. Look how big he is compared to me. He not going to fall. You ever think about doing security? No, okay, cool. <laughs> I got you. Thank you, sir. Give Brother Gavin a round of applause. that short in my life. <laughs> but our strength is shown where we know, when we know where to hide. I made a post this week and it says religious weakness, this is what we have when we have religion where we're just under religion. We say these things, man, I messed up. My dad's going to kill me. But kingdom says, I messed up. I need to call my dad. That's two different things. Religion says, I messed up. 
my dad's going to kill me. Kingdom says, I messed up. I need to call my dad. It's showing where you, you, that's showing that you know where to go. You know where your help from, comes from. My help comes from what? The Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all getting this? If you're getting it, just clap real loud right here. Three. Three. Number three. Prayer moves angels. We jumped in on this just a little bit last week. Prayer moves angels. The answer is I need y'all to be my example today. Right, there it is. I need y'all to be angels today. So prayer moves angels. Not only does God, when I start praying, does God show up? Gavin, I'm sorry, brother. <laughs> hey, man, we're going to get some ramen this week, brother. I know, man. So not only when I start praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to hide behind this shadow of the Almighty. Father, in the name of Jesus, God shows up. And then, stay there, then the scripture says in Daniel 9, 20, 22, it says, while I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of the people of Israel and making my request known to the Lord, my God of the holy hill, God showed up, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, one of the angels, the man I had seen earlier in a vision, came to me in swift flight. So as I start praying, Father, in the name of Jesus... Not just Gabriel, but all of them will show up too. I believe it. Gabriel was just assigned that day. They all going to show up in swift flight. There it is. Can we try that again? Try that again. All you guys back up this way. Back up this way. We're going to try that again because a lot of us need this visual here. Can you imagine? Because I need you to see what's going on in the spirit. I need y'all to see what's <laughs> What's going on in the spirit? We have not rehearsed this, but I believe it's going to work out. <laughs> so the scripture says an angel. The last week we talked about all angels standing in attention when we start praying. That's the authority that we have in the kingdom of God. You're my son. They look at you just like they look at me. So the moment you start speaking up about what needs to go on and I start praying, God shows up. Father, in the name of Jesus, and then as I'm praying, swiftly angels surround me. This is why it's so important to pray. We're trying to figure out, God, how come I, I'm, I feel like I'm getting beat up? I feel like I'm just not making it through this thing because you ain't putting angels on assignment. You ain't calling God into the situation. See, I feel way more comfortable fighting you right here. Not only am I hiding under the shadow of the Almighty, but I got a band of angels around me ready to fight. I can imagine they got swords and shields standing there like, okay, who trying? Come at me, homie. This was going down. Because I pray. Thank y'all. Hallelujah. Give them a round of applause. These things swiftly happen because I pray. God answers quickly because I pray. God shows up in a hustle with haste because I pray. Yeah. Number four. Number four. Prayer attacks demons. Prayer attacks demons. There's a scripture in Ephesians. A lot of us, we quote, that's, our, that's like our go-to scripture, especially when you're talking kingdom and kingdom warfare and all these things. We say it, but we don't understand it. It says in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers. Y'all, I didn't give you that one, I know. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against rulers, the authorities in the spirit, and against spiritual forces, against the powers of this dark world. What that lets you know is that the enemy in the spiritual realm, just like God has an army, he has an army as well. He has generals, commanders, he has, he has foot soldiers in the spirit. And he is literally raising those up against you every day. He has a plan for them to take down God's will in your life, for them to take down the promises of the Lord in your life. Their job is to fight against you in your purpose. And he's, he's strategic about it. But too often, too often, we don't pray. We don't know how to war in the spirit. Trust me, I'm talking to me today too. We don't know how to war in the spirit. So there's an army. Can you imagine there's an army fighting me, coming against me right here, but I, I can't see them because I'm not praying. I'm so focused on getting you to shut up. I'm so focused on making sure my point is proved in our argument. But at the same time, there's a whole army that is right in front of me throwing fists. They're shooting guns. They are literally trying to take me out. But I'm so focused over here because, man, how come Brother Jerry didn't give me that leadership position? Wait a minute, how come, how come they got extra favor? They don't treat me like that. Or this is get real personal. You know what? I don't like what you said about me. You done made me mad. You offended me. You know what? I'm going to leave that church. I don't feel loved. Y'all ain't loving me the way I want to be loved. That's that, Y'all ain't going to pacify me the way I want to be pacified. And the whole time you focus on the church, the building, how leadership set up. Your friends, your family, your cousin who done made you mad and the enemy is just right in front of you. Can you imagine just getting hit in the face over and over and over again? And you, you just looking over here, focus on people. Upset that the bill collector is calling you asking for their money. That you owe them. That's real. Yeah, I, I'd have heard people say that. <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? Man, these bill collectors, they just keep calling me, man. They, they, God, I just got need God to do. Pay them back. They will stop calling. Pay them back. You use their services. Pay them back. Don't be a thief. Good stewards. We all, I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm talking to myself. We all fall in it. Sometimes we're really good stewards. But we don't, we don't know how to fight, guys. Can you put that back up there? Prayer attacks demons. We don't, we don't know how to fight. We're not, we're not praying. I can imagine the enemy just laughing at us. Just laughing because we ain't fighting back. And you, you ever played that game in high school or junior high? Where, it's not the Marcus. In high school, junior high, face that way. And, and you walk past somebody and you tap their shoulder, they look that way. And you're sitting there laughing. Ha, <laughs> ha, I got you. I believe that's what the enemy does. You got to see. The enemy, the enemy, he's just bothering you. He hits you on your left side, you turn to the left, and he's just standing on the right like, ha, <laughs> I got him. Look, they so focused on what Sister So-and-so did to them. They whole week done got jacked up. Look, we don't want again, guys. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know where we're firing our, aim, where our, our, our arrows. I'm so focused on getting you to feel the same hurt that I feel that you caused me instead of aiming the right way and aiming at the enemy. Instead of calling on the Lord 
You don't have to get up this time. Instead of calling on the Lord and allowing him to stand in between me and you, and I focus on what God wants. See, that's how you put people, on, put, put people on assignment. Come here, brother. I do want to see this example, but I ain't going to make you walk all the way up here again. <laughs> so I'm going to put God. I pray God shows up. There's also angels around me. I don't have to get up. There's also angels around me. See, you're the one that's bothering me. I'm going to put God right here. See, now you're going to have to deal with him and the enemy. All the stuff you done did to me, I'm going to deal with you. I need to know where to, where to aim. We got to quit aiming at each other. There's too much friendly fire in the church right now. Too much friendly fire in the church. Friendly fire is when somebody on your team gets hit by your bullet. Where we supposed to be fighting this army of the devil together. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against each other. But we wrestle well, who we should be fighting is these spiritual, this spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank you, sir. Where's your arrow being aimed? Let's move on. Prayer number five. You're almost done. Prayer unlocks us. Prayer unlocks us. Psalms 32. Six through seven. You can take notes if you want to. Psalms 32, six through seven. Every, everything that I'm listing, guys, literally came out of the word of God. I didn't add to it. I didn't, it's, 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 it's right there. Psalms 32, six through seven, it says, therefore let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. That's the line that jumped out real heavy at me. You will protect me from trouble. Brother Gavin, one more time. You will protect me from trouble. Angels too. You will protect me from trouble. And you will surround me with songs of deliverance. Come on up here. So the moment I start praying, like I said, God shows up. Angels show up. This is how prayer unlocks us. Because I'm not just standing here hiding. While he's blocking and the angels are protecting, at the same time, because God is omnipresent, at the same time, God is teaching me how to fight. He's unlocking the strength that's within me. So what he's saying is, when you throw this right, when, when the enemy throws a right punch at you, I need you to dodge it this way. Can y'all see that? Angels, back up, back up. You good, you good, you good. Thank you, angel. Just imagine I'm still around. When he throws, God is saying, hey, this is training. It's training season while you're hiding in here. The enemy's going to try to throw a right punch. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm imagining a boxing fight. And, and God, not only is in your corner, but he being nosy in the other corner. And he knows the strategy. Hey, he's going to come out here. He's going to throw a right punch right at your face. What I need you to do is dodge to the left. And then after he does that, he's going to throw a left punch, and I need you to swoop under and find an open space to hit him back. So, so we, the bell rings. Ding! And the guy's like, here it is. I showed you what to do. He's going to throw a right punch. Boom. See that? The matrix right there. Boom. I see it. But it's crazy because I see how the enemy did it. And he said, okay, he said a left punch is coming. A left punch. Okay, he's going to try to hit me with my family. He's going to try to bring sickness to my family. And, and, and usually that would catch me off guard, but God already warned me about that. And I've already been praying in the spirit. So I've been in and out of the throne room, and I know exactly what the enemy's going to do. So that left punch is coming. As soon as that left punch comes, he told me to duck this way. And now I have an open. You see, he wide open. Now I can throw my punch back at him, which is my dec decrees and declarations. I decree healing. 
for my family. I decree breakthrough. No longer will this generational curse hurt me and my family again. You thought you was going to catch me off guard, but I didn't caught you off guard. Thank you, sir. I know my friend, my friend Justice knows about that UFC fighter. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, Lord. Y'all get that. Prayer unlocks us. It's a training place when we're under the shadow of the Almighty. The, the next line, put that back up there, that scripture, Psalms 32. We're almost done. It's Psalms 32 right there. Go to, go to verse 7. It says, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Not only am I getting training in this hiding place, the angels, you don't have to get up. <laughs> the angels, they're singing songs of deliverance around you. They're giving you the tools. Hey, so as you're training here, the angels are like, this is what, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to fight. This is, this, this, here's the thing that's going to help deliver you and your family. You got your battle tactics, but here's, here's what you need to do right here. Create a savings account. Because you're going to be the one that's going to break this financial curse over your family. So create a savings account now for your children and their children and their children. Or they'll say, hey, you know what? You might need to go see a counselor about your anger management. I've actually rose up real counselors for mental health that love the Lord. And I need you to go talk to them because you got an issue with anger. And because you have this issue with anger, your lens is cracked. Every time you look at people, you feel like they got something against you. You always got a chip on your shoulder. I need you to deal with that. It's these songs of deliverance. These things that is going to help you break through from what you, where you've been. Come on, but the only way to get to this hiding place, this secret place, is to pray. It's simple. God's like, man, just talk to me. I've already set up the order. I, listen, you ain't got to, got to try to set it up for me. I've set it up for you. <sighs> Last one. Prayer transforms. Prayer transforms. I'm going to read Job 22, 29 through 30. You can write all these scriptures down. It says, when people are brought low and you say lift them up, then he will save the downcast. Wait, what? When people are low and you say lift them up, he will save them. But then it goes on to say, this is where it gets really deep here, guys. He will deliver even one who is not innocent. Who will be delivered through, the, clean, through, through the, uh, the cleanliness of your hands. Wait, wait. So we, he then gave us the key on how to figure this whole thing out. I'm, I'm sitting here trying to pray. On, I'm trying to figure out, well, God, how do I get my family saved? How do I get my brother or my sister or my, or my friend to get, to get deliverance from the things that they're dealing with? See, we, we do it wrong. We're like, oh, I need to invite them to church. That scripture don't say that. I need to make sure they come to Bible study with me. It don't say that. What it says is the, the one that's not innocent the one that's just all in sin, the one that's just all in this craziness, the one that's just dealing with all this stuff, you don't have to invite them to church. It says you need to make sure your hands are clean and you, and you pray. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Only those with clean hands and a pure heart. The moment, That's how you get to the, to the hill of the Lord. And he says when you're there and you begin to pray to lift them up, I will take the most raggedy rag of people and I will deliver them based off what you asked for. 
See, that's how people end up driving past this church. They're like, man, so you praying from all the way in Kentucky. They end up driving past Tristone, and something tells them, hey, you need to stop in there. And all of a sudden, what they needed to hear was spoken that day, and they give their life to the Lord. All because of what you prayed 100 miles away. You don't know how God's going to do it, but too often we try to orchestrate I need to get them to Bible study. I need to get them to do this. I need to get them to do this. I need to get them. That's like, you need to quit trying to you, you, you keep doing it. You're not allowing me to do it. You won't let me do it. I have a way that I'm going to deliver them. Your job is just pray. You can never force somebody to love somebody. Their relationship with the Lord isn't, isn't an arranged marriage. You pray, God will open the door for them to make a decision, and you just leave it all in God's hand. If they don't make the decision, pray again. Yes, Lord. Are y'all getting this? Last, last couple of scriptures and we're done. I, I, I just felt like God saying that before you move into rejoicing and shouting and praising and doing all the extra stuff, let's talk about the importance of prayer. So here's the last thing he said. He said, here's, some of us know the importance of prayer, but we don't know how. There's one scripture that always blows me away in Matthew. There was one point Jesus actually said, yeah, I need y'all to pray like this. How should we pray? Like this. How should we pray? Like this. He gave two, two sides of the coin. He says, this is how you don't pray, and this is how you should pray. Matthew 6, 5 through 10. He says, and when you pray, here's the don't. Don't be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand in the synagogues and the streets, street corners to be seen by others. They love to come to church and get chose to pray. I pray. They love to do that. It says, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full because they, they got their reward from you. They shine. You let them shine. The guy's like, they ain't got no prayer life. No personal prayer life but they real good in prayer in front of people. They got the language. They got the, they got the, they tongue sound real fluent. And God's just sitting there like, who is that? You don't talk to me like that at home. Where did you come from? He says, don't do that. Don't be like, you can play, yeah, you're good. Don't be like those people. He goes on to say, they've received their full reward. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to the Father who is unseen. You get your reps in prayer in your personal time, not in front of people. That's like, see, I'm all for the person who has an awesome personal prayer life. They can get in front of the people and do this awesome prayer because it, it matches what they do at home. He said, don't, don't get up and try to shine and you ain't got no prayer life at home. Don't get up and try to worship and shout and praise and you don't do that at home. God's like, I want you... When you do things in front of people, let it be the same thing you do with me. If you don't do this with me, don't do it in front of everybody else. He goes on. He goes on and says, when you pray, don't be like babbling pagans. For they think they will, have, they will be heard because of their many words. They're awesome words. He said, don't be like them. 
Well, the Father knows what you need before you even ask Him. Some of us got real good prayer language. We just, and God, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God. Ain't said nothing. Ain't said nothing. It sound good. We start praying because in the Greek, it says, Father, this word means this. And if it's translated to the Hebrew, this word means this. And then, and God is sitting there like, what? Who are you? What is that? You ever know, when you see people pray like that, they kind of lift themselves up. And, and they really just talking to themselves because ain't, no, ain't nobody else even engaged. They're like, what? What are you talking about? God, God will honor the person who ain't got nothing to say. Uh, God, I just kind of had a rough day. Just like David, I don't really feel like praising God today. I don't really feel, I don't really feel like being here with these people because they get on my nerves. But God, I know you're faithful and help my unbelief. Help me. I, I ain't got it all together. I, I believe God honors that. We got to stop trying to copy in the post yesterday. You got to stop trying to copy other people's anointing. You got to stop trying to copy the way people talk and preach. They pray, copy how they sing. You know, that's how the enemy keeps us from doing things. I'll tell you personal testimony. I fear preaching. Sometimes that still rises up. Because I get so caught up in, man, I don't really know everything. I haven't studied way. I know you desire me to study. Um, there are some things that I wish I had revelation on that I don't. I say um a lot. I get tongue-tied a lot. Some things that I think sound great doesn't really sound great when I say it. Like there was a few times a day, I, I think I said some key things. I was like, ooh, that's going to be good. Y'all just, just sat there. And, but I, I, I mean, it kept me from getting in front of people and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. That's how the enemy used it. It's time out for that, guys. You have a voice that is unique to you. You have a song on your spirit that is unique to you. You have a dance that comes out of your limbs that is unique to you. You may not be able to plie like everybody else. You may not be able to spin like everybody else. You may not be able to riff like everybody else and do all the nice runs in and out of key and landing on chords and stuff like that. You may not be able to do that. You may not be able to get up here and sound really profound like T.D. Jakes. Do, do you, honey? I, I like that. I'm, that need to be on a shirt. Do you, honey? Do you, do you, boo-boo? Do you. One thing T.D. Jake said, I, I, oh, thank you, thank you, God. One thing T.D. Jake said one time, he said, man, he said, I, I didn't know what to do when I got in front of people. He said, but one thing I knew I liked, I liked movies, I liked art. He said, man, I realize I'm a great storyteller. He said, so how I started preaching was I just told the stories of the word and how I seen them. And it, all of a sudden they started drawing people. He said, and then that helped him walk into his ministry. What has God gifted you to do? What are you great at doing? If you don't know, pray and thank him for the answer. Everybody stand. Whew. That was
was heavy today. One thing about prayer, Isaiah 65, 24 says, and this is, this is great, it says, I will answer them before they even call me. <laughs> Woo! I will answer them before they even call me. So can you imagine, going back to the Gavin example, can you imagine before your knee hit the ground to start praying, God already showed up. I already know what you want. I got you. Got you. Got you. Don't worry about it. So I will answer them before they even call me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. So while you're still praying for the thing to be done, God is already orchestrating it to be done. He's already putting people in place. He's already moving things around. If there's one thing that you can remember today, if Jesus prayed, you probably should too. If Jesus prayed, you probably should too. Amen? Somebody shout to the Lord like you've lost your mind. <laughs> 